the 25th of October 2011 was a date that marked the release of one of the best FPS games of all time, Battlefield 3. Getting on towards 9 years old, Battlefield 3 is still a game you can go back and play, and it has cemented itself in the history of incredible video games that personally for me had a significant impact on my life. Now in 2020, Battlefield 3 still has a loyal player base, and whilst we probably are coming towards the end of its life, I have to say that it will always act as an example of how to do things correctly, not only in terms of the actual game, but in terms of the marketing and the build-up. The hype machine behind Battlefield 3 was immense, and DICE delivered with an absolutely, insanely good game. It was a blockbuster. Let's take a look back at the marketing behind Battlefield 3 for a minute. I suggest checking out a video by Jack Frags called Battlefield 3, a hype and marketing masterpiece, if you want a 10 minute version of the build up to Battlefield 3. For those though that don't want to go over there, I'll give you a short synopsis. It was June 2009 when whispers surrounding Battlefield 3 began. A massive project was on the cards. Hype was there right from the start. Players had been enjoying Bad Company 2, but to be honest, many players wanted a true successor to Battlefield 2, a game that had launched in 2005. A little time passed and in February 2010, BF3 was confirmed, saying that for the past three years, it had actually been in development. It was potentially something to take on the Call of Duty franchise, but most importantly, bring that wide-scale, all-out war experience back to the FPS world. August 2010. Beta access was going to be available through ordering the Medal of Honor game, another canny marketing strategy. DICE knew that this was the world of pre-ordering games, and riding the wave of hype surrounding BF3 was the best thing to do. From there, we saw so many teaser trailers, the first being on February 3rd, 2011, where we were exposed to the distorted Battlefield 3 theme modern military, US soldiers, weapons, tanks, attack helicopters, jets. It was incredible. Finally, a true successor to Battlefield 2. Snippets of footage dropped in the coming months and behind the scenes media events let people see what the potential was behind this game. The build up was immense, reactions were all positive. Campaign trailers dropped with my favourite being the tank mission, Thunder Run. They dropped technical videos and tried to showcase all of the new stuff. Many have even said that the marketing behind Battlefield 3 was the best in the franchise, it certainly was the best up until that point. And for me, the icing on the cake was the Gamescom trailer in August. Caspian Border, 64 player conquest. This was Battlefield. This was All Out War. And people started pre-ordering. In total, EA managed to accrue 3 million pre-orders. 5 to 10 million copies were sold within a week, and 15 million copies sold in less than a year. It's reported around 21 million copies have sold in total. 21 million. That is an absolutely incredible amount, especially in an age that has been dominated by the Call of Duty franchise. Let me put that number into perspective with some of the most well-known games in history that I personally played quite a lot of. Halo 3 released in 2007, and of course you all know about Halo 3, that sold 12 million units in total. Battlefield 4 also sold around 12 million copies, and that released a year or so after Battlefield 3. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 sold around 25 million copies. This placed BF3 in the ring with the Call of Duty franchise, and in my opinion set the standard for Battlefield as a game. This is what the players wanted. A potentially controversial campaign story, realistic, destruction, modern weaponry, gritty and powerful. BF3 had it all. A lot of people were really impressed with the improvements DICE had made between Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 3. Frostbite 2 was the engine behind Battlefield 3 and something called Destruction 3.0 also made its debut. Falling debris was now potentially lethal to the player, which was something that had not been seen before. It was realistic and on an epic scale, and although I don't really like using the word too much for Battlefield games, it certainly was quite immersive. These are all buzzwords that we're fairly used to hearing these days, but with the rapid rise in technology, falling debris doesn't seem like something you'd really care about. Nine years ago though, this was a massive improvement. 
Further changes to the engine included the addition of suppressive fire and disabling vehicles before destroying them. Suppression is again something that divides opinion a little bit, but the fact that it was being added to the game proved that Battlefield was moving forward. Vehicle gameplay as well was absolutely wonderful in Battlefield 3. It was ahead of its time and lavished with critical praise and awards, but what really made Battlefield 3 such a good game? The Battlefield 3 launch trailer was very good and the clever marketing strategy got people in the right frame of mind before launch, but more importantly, the game that followed did live up to expectations. People who bought it on release will remember that it did have some bugs and some severe launch issues, let's not forget that. Server performance wasn't great and the game stability needed some work, but the game itself, the core mechanics, were superb. A great variety of maps with proper all-out warfare incorporating vehicles and infantry into the same environment. Modes like Rush and Conquest brought different experiences, some being slower paced, others being hectic meat grinders with no chance of a breather. Fast weapon attachments and gadgets, loads of choices with perks, it just meant you could spend hours working out which loadout was for you and from a content creator's perspective, it was a goldmine. This was the age of YouTube and videos started getting massive views. The game promoted itself through that bottomless pit of creation. The wheel kept on turning and the game kept on getting more popular. From a personal point of view though, it was the little things that got me coming back. The engaging infantry and vehicle gameplay are so important and the map design was superb, but other things, I'm talking about the voice lines, they're incredible. The atmosphere is stunning and the feel of the weapons and the audio behind them is addictive. The little things like when you die and hold your hand up or the sound of breathing in deeply when you get revived. I can't tell you how much that does when you bundle it all up into a single experience and then relive it with every fresh spawn. Let's get it clear, I'm a bit of a noob at Battlefield 3, I didn't play it much on PC as back in those days I was a console player and since moving to PC I haven't really gone back and put in hundreds of hours like I've done with other Battlefields. Sure, I have played the game a fair bit, I know virtually all the maps quite well, I know the weapons and I know how to play the different modes, I have played it a fair bit, but not a thousand hours like I have with other Battlefield games. That being said, I still love it. I can go back all these years later and just play. I don't have to get a 20 kill streak to have fun. The game itself is intoxicating and it's enough just to go online and play. In addition to that though, you do have a huge skill ceiling and that is a massive reason to return to the game and it's a reason why so many players have accrued so many hours. The gameplay you've seen in the background throughout this video was just a random game of Rush on Grand Bazaar and wasn't anything special. I think it was better to just get online and play and show you what my average experience looks like. A lot of content creators, including myself, will often spend ages trying to get really interesting matches with loads of close moments and epic only in Battlefield clips. Battlefield 3 doesn't really need that though. An M16A3 with iron sights in the medic class in a hectic urban environment. I loved every second. I suppose the big question that many people are asking is, what about a remaster for Battlefield 3? If one game in the franchise needed to be remade, arguably it would be Battlefield 3. I guess the question though really is do people want a full remaster or do they just want Battlefield 3 to be populated and then maybe released for the PlayStation 4 as you can't play it there? I think certain things have aged quite significantly with Battlefield 3, namely the server performance. 10 Hertz just isn't enough and you can really feel that when playing. Some of the animations are a bit shaky at times and the screen shake itself is certainly overbearing. That being said, when have you ever played a game where everything works just as you want it to? BF3 does a remarkable job and in my opinion, holds up better than any game from that era. The visuals certainly can't be sniffed at, whilst it's not as detailed as modern Battlefield games, that can be expected with its age. It's well over eight years old. The layout and framing of maps is a 10 out of 10 though, and it's a real testament to the work the team put in all those years ago. What an absolute masterpiece. Personally, I don't wanna see it remade. I'd rather see servers renewed and a real push from EA to get people back online and playing. Maybe they could give it away free with an upcoming Battlefield game or in a few months if BF5 struggles. Maybe have an update 
to BF3 to get those servers filled again. I don't know. But sometimes with a remaster, you don't get everything you hoped for. And I really don't want to sour that experience I've had with BF3. Just to finish off this video, let's take a look at a few facts about BF3 that you may not know about. I always find these facts interesting, it's kind of a bit of trivia behind the game. During the mission Uprising, you have to stab a rat that is potentially going to give your position away. Now this scene is known by everyone that's played the campaign, but did you know that Peter, the people for the ethical treatment of animals, claimed that the game treats animals in a sadistic manner and that the scene can have a brutalizing effect on the young male target audience. Hilarious to think that this was something they were actually concerned about, but I guess it's just one of the many hurdles a studio encounters when creating a game like this. I can imagine DICE had a lot of trouble in Battlefield 1 with the horses, with Peter having similar issues. Iran actually banned the sale of Battlefield 3 due to the map Grand Bazaar, looking too similar to its real-life counterpart. Of course, the issues between the USA and Iran right now kind of make this trivia a little bit more controversial, but that being said, it's another issue studios run into when they set these modern military shooters in real-life locations. And finally, the teaser trailer for Battlefield 3 includes a soldier yelling, holy shit, in panic. This voice recording was taken from a real-life Air Force pilot who was avoiding incoming surface-to-air missiles. There is actually a video on YouTube, if you search for it, of that clip. It's real life, the guy is scared for his life as there is a missile coming to destroy him, and he does avoid it, and that recording is then put into the game. So let me know what you think of Battlefield 3 in the comments. Are you still playing it all these years later? Do you want to get online and enjoy it after watching this video? Hopefully DICE can recapture some of the epic moments we experienced in Battlefield 3 and really follow that marketing campaign and that hype train that made Battlefield 3 so popular. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.